Hi, and welcome to this video. In this one, we're going to highlight the new features of the Fallout 3 SP2 version of the SAP BI Suite. We've made sure to listen to your feedback and brought back features that weren't available since Fallout 3. We've also focused on usability, revamped multiple parts of the user interface, while still adding features that you guys have been asking for. Let's jump right in. Let's start with a quick roundup of the new features available in the BI Launchpad. We now support end-to-end -end SSO authentication. This can be done in the CMC using authorization servers. Authorization servers can help separate the configuration for different types of resources, such as Google Drive or data, or agnostic. Authorization servers are especially handy for refreshing the data source, especially cloud sources like Snowflake, scheduling to cloud drives like Google Drive, consuming content available in cloud drives like Google Sheet, setting up the framework for new age authentication OpenID Connect, querying online resources like OData, and working with OAuth 2.0. As users, you can now manage authorizations when the call by SSL is enabled for secure communication to the backend. Upon successful authorization, you can store the token issued at the user info object against the respective authorization reference. OpenID works coupled with authentication. For SAML authentication, for instance, users must be imported to the BI platform first with an email as an enterprise alias. But unlike SIML authentication, OpenID authentication doesn't rely on trusted authentication. Once allowed in the backend, this option allows for OpenID authentication. Until now, there was no failover mechanism for when an event server was stopped or disabled. In this release, we're introducing a fallback server option for file events. This failover supports help you modify the existing file events to select fallback servers in case of update scenarios. As you guys know, the query panel has always been the cornerstone of web intelligence. Well, we've enhanced it and made it the central place to work on any type of data source. The first thing you'll notice is that we have redesigned the data source selection dialog and added Google Drive as well as web services data sources. For now, let's focus on Google Drive and build a query using a Google spreadsheet. Note that you can also select a text or an Excel file hosted on Google Drive. The query panel now offers a unified experience and common capabilities for all data sources. Whether you're working with an Excel file, a Google spreadsheet, freehand SQL or a universe, you now have access to the same capabilities. You can select the objects to include in the query, add filters, preview the results, define the maximum number of rows, and many more capabilities. Another thing that we've added is the folder view for universe in the query panel and the support of geo dimension for universes. As you can see here, when selecting a universe, I can now browse using the folders view. There's also a search bar that you can leverage if needed. So, as you've seen, the query panel is now a one-stop shop for all querying activities, regardless of the data source you're working on. But what about object qualification? Well, it's been moved to the properties panel. And the good news is, regardless of the data source you're working on, you can now edit objects directly within web intelligence rather than in the data source itself. After you've run the query, you can go back to the properties panel to work on objects that are part of it. It's located in the side panel, right next to the format pane. In here, you'll be able to edit objects properties like the name, description, or aggregation type. And depending on the data source type, you will also be able to edit the associated dimension and qualification. Switching back to the objects pane, you can immediately see the objects that have been modified thanks to a new icon. Hovering over one of these objects displays a tooltip that indicates both the previous and new values for the object. If needed, you can always go back to the original values using the revert button in the properties panel to revert all properties or the dedicated revert button to revert individual properties. These options are also available for variables and you can edit them on the fly using the properties panel. If ever the text field is too small to display the formula, you can always call up the formula editor using the dedicated button. The formula editor has also been enhanced to simplify the formula edition with a more robust code editor. The objects, functions, and operators panes have been moved to the left to leave more space to the code editor. 
It now supports color coding, syntax analysis, line wrapping, copy and paste, shortcuts, and many more capabilities. Another big change in this release is the arrival of OData as a data source. You'll be able to use OData data sources, but also generate OData links from existing visualizations. Let's open a sample and see how this works. I'll generate a valid link using the contextual menu. OData links generated from existing visualizations can be reused in third-party tools by any BOE user to retrieve web intelligence data while still leveraging the BOE security. So now, I can create a new document using OData and pick up the objects that were part of the original visualization. Along with the changes we've covered so far, we've also worked on a number of improvements for better usability. Shared elements are also back in Folder 3 SP2. You will be able to share report parts and manage them using the dedicated shared elements pane. Also, quick tip, there's no longer need to browse the repository if you want to insert a shared element that's already present in the document or the report. More than simply hiding reports in the report bar, you can now hide them conventionally based on formulas. Use the Hide when formula is true option in the format panel to hide reports conditionally. In reading mode, the report is then hidden if the formula is true. In the format panel, you can also add a description to the report using the dedicated text field. The prompts dialog has been redesigned and you can see both prompts and their associated values on a single screen. It's also possible to copy values from columns of an Excel sheet or text file, for instance, and paste them directly within Web Intelligence to answer prompts quickly. Under the prompts, you can also get a preview of the selected values. Freezing headers is back in Web Intelligence in both reading and design modes. Use the context menu when clicking the table to edit tables individually. Within a table, you can now freeze horizontal and vertical headers as well as first rows and columns. You can also freeze all tables directly from the toolbar using the dedicated icon. Available in both reading and design modes, the presentation mode allows you to refresh documents regularly so you can closely monitor report data. It's especially suited for documents that are created for dashboard purposes. You can switch between tabs, select the reports that you want to cycle through, and so on. For a complete list of the new features coming to this release, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.